Hi, my name is Sylvia. I'm a psychotherapist and the author of the book Go Into Your Happiness. You'll be able to find the link for that book down below. Today I want to talk to you about self-talk. Why is it so important? Why you should pay attention to what you're telling yourself and the effect of self-talk to your life. I wonder, have you ever paid attention to what you're telling yourself? It doesn't have to be out loud, but what are you telling yourself in your mind? It's like this inner voice in your head that is telling you something about yourself. It's like when you make a mistake or something doesn't go according to your plan or what you would like to get and you didn't get it. What are you telling yourself in those situations? Are you then more negative towards yourself? You criticizing yourself and telling you how useless you are or you knew it's not going to happen because you couldn't do it. Or maybe you're more on the positive side. Okay, I didn't do it this time. I will try next time and next time and next time until I get it done. See how you talk to yourself. It's very important because it can affect your life. It can affect what you think and what you believe about yourself it will affect your life outside so what i mean like what you have in your inner world that will manifest in the external world you just can't expect to be positive to be happy to have confidence to start believing in yourself when your self-talk is so negative it doesn't work together what you're telling yourself that's how you starting to believe that you are this is important that you will start to pay attention of what exactly you're telling yourself what are you believing that you are i think our childhood has impact our self-talk how we perceive ourselves and what we exactly telling ourselves but that doesn't mean you can't change it that doesn't mean that the rest of your life now will be affected by your childhood experience no you can change how you talk to yourself you can change how you perceiving yourself and that will manifest in your own life that will manifest in your confidence in your self-esteem that you will start to believe in yourself more but it will require some of your work. Ask yourself, what did you hear when you were a child? So let's say when you wanted to try and climb tree, what your parents told you in that situation? They were jumping and saying, no, 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 don't, don't go because you will hurt yourself. Be careful, you can't do this. And they will get you out of the tree. Or maybe, okay, try it, but just be careful. But still try it. You can do this, go ahead quite innocent situation isn't it but how did that situation impact you today did you ever think of that do you perceive the world as a danger thing that you need to be careful or do you like to take the risk or you prefer staying on the safe pace when like you know no surprises are you willing to take the risks or you prefer more safety spaces environments either or ask yourself why why would you prefer s more safety and stable places or why would you prefer or why would you why would you not be afraid of taking the risk in your life and that doesn't have to be i'm not talking now about climbing the trees now okay <laughs> i'm talking more about taking the risk in the business you know like more in your adult life like would you be able to would you willing to try something new or you would um not go there at all yes your childhood had effect and is having effect until this day to your life but that doesn't have to be the rule of your life you actually can change it you can be in control of how you're going to live your life so I will tell you, I will give you a few tips of how to change the self-talk. 
that hopefully you'll be able to be more compassionate and more kind to yourself. But before we go there, I would like to tell you uh, more about the effect to your life regarding self-talk. So ask yourself how your own self-talk is affecting your life. Negative self-talk will manifest in lack of motivation. Did you notice that in yourself, that you don't want to try new things because like, you don't have any motivation at all? Yes. But what's behind that? Lack of motivation is only a symptom. It's not the cause of what's happening. So what's behind lack of motivation? Very often behind lack of motivation is fear. Fear of failure will stop you living the life that you really could fear from failure will stop you of trying new things you will not develop you will not learn how are you supposed to learn if you're not willing to make mistakes it's not possible we are learning through our mistakes if you don't want to make mistakes because you fear that you will fail then there's no room for learning And when we don't learn, we don't develop. And when we don't develop, we are, we are stopping ourselves. Our life then become still. And are you happy with that stillness? Can you be happy in that stillness? I don't know. Maybe you can. But then for how long? A year? Two? Fifty? Fifty years of doing nothing? Are you really willing to waste your life? Or... Are you really willing to put your life on hold for so many years because of the fear? Think what exactly you want. Think what exactly are you doing with your life or where your life is heading to. To your dreams, to where you really want to achieve something, you be something, feel that you are something, that, you know, some kind of accomplishments. The fear is so huge that even the thought of doing something new is so terrifying that you just you're just frozen. You just can't do this. Is that how you want to live your life? No, I hope not. So another effect of negative self-talk is fear of judgment. But then again, fear of judgment from who? From other people? But Usually we are our biggest judge. So we are judging ourselves all the time. And because of that, because we hear ourselves talking so negative to ourselves, you know, like when we're judging ourselves and then we think, okay, so if I can think like that about myself, so what other people will think of me or what they will think about my mistake. But really, those thoughts are yours. So what we tend to do is like when we talk very negative to ourselves and we be judging ourselves, like, you know, after making a mistake or something, we are judging ourselves. But then what we do is we were projecting. We project in our thoughts to someone else. And then we think, okay, if I think like that, they think like me. Oh my God, I, I, I can't stand that. No way, I'm not going to try to do anything because I don't want that judgment. But this is your judgment. It's like you're trying to figure out what other people will think. So you're not in your own feelings. You're not, like, you're not present. You are in other people's heads trying to figure out what they're thinking. Don't go there. You will never, ever able to figure out what other people think. But do you really want to know what other people think all the time? Do you not have enough of your own thoughts? So don't. Don't try to figure out what other people are thinking. Don't try to figure out what's in their mind. How they will judge you. Because they probably won't. Because they have their own stuff. They have their own lives. Their own issues. So... Even if, let's say, you fail and then you got up and you can see that people were looking at you. Yes, they probably noticed. But did they really think of that five minutes later? 
10 minutes later? I don't think so. Okay, I have another question. What do you think will happen if you fail? What do you believe will happen if you make mistake and you will get the sense of failure? What will happen? How will that change your life? Um, will you lose the sense of identity? Will you lose your friends, your family? Will the world end? What will happen? If you make mistake, what will happen? How will that affect your life? Yeah, exactly. Not much changes will happen after you fail. It's probably you might not feel good about yourself, but that's about that. The world still be there. Your friends and your family still will be there. See, like what will happen if you fail? What is your belief that will happen after you make mistake? Let me give you an example. All of us, at some stage of our life, we were toddlers and we were learning to walk. So was it easy? Of course not. How many times have you failed? Many times. How many times you bump your head? Many times. You had bruises. Did you give up? Did you have the fear of failure? Did you have the fear of judgment? No, you didn't. You just kept going until you learned how to walk. And after that, then you were trying and learned how to run. It's not like you were, let's say, one or one and a half and you said to yourself, okay, I'm going to try just this once to make a first and second step. I will learn how to walk, but if I want to make it happen, For the first time, that's it. I'm throwing a tantrum and I will never walk again. Look at yourself today. You're an expert of walking. Like you don't even think when we do it. You don't even think when you do it. You just get up and there you go. You're, You're walking. You don't even consciously put any awareness of how you I make a first step and then second step and the following step. You just don't think like that. You're just doing it without thinking. But look back when you were one, one and a half. Was it that easy back then? Of course not. But you didn't give up. You did not give up on yourself. You knew you want to walk. And there you go. You have achieved that. So what is the difference now? Why do you think or why do you expect yourself to be an expert of something for the first time trying? That will never happen. We can't be an expert of something. We can't be good at something without even trying. Think about how you stop believing in yourself. Why did you do it? Is it really worth not trying new things? Is it really worth putting your life on hold because of the fear? Fear that very often is actually irrational. It doesn't really manifest in in such a bad way the way you have it on your mind. So now I will give you a few tips of how you can change, slowly change how you talk to yourself and how you're perceiving yourself. So first one and probably the most important one would be try to be more aware of when and how you talk to yourself. And then when you're noticing that you went into the mode of negative self-talk, stop yourself. But how you stop is important. So you don't give an up to yourself. Oh, why did I do this again? Or see, it's never going to happen. And no, no, no. Don't go there. Try to be more compassionate. Try to be more kind to yourself. So when you notice yourself that you have, again, starting to negative self-talk, say to yourself, okay, but stop. How can I change that thought? Is it really that bad? Talk to yourself 
as you were your best friend. Tell yourself things that you will tell your friend. So if your friend makes some kind of mistake, what would you tell her? Would you start giving out and calling her names and be negative towards her or be like supportive? Would you be saying to your friend, okay, you made mistake, don't worry, try next time, it will happen. Eventually it will happen. So do you know what I mean? So rather than being so demanding and judgmental and negative towards yourself, try to turn this around and be more kind, be more supportive to yourself. And then start noticing the difference of how you will then perceive the world around you, but more importantly, how you perceive yourself in that world. You deserve to be kind to yourself. You deserve to be compassionate towards yourself. And don't fear that you will then turn into a selfish person. Because that's what I noticed as well. Many people think that when they will turn you know, themselves into self-compassion, then they will become bad people that are selfish. And no, self-compassion and selfishness it's like two opposite polars it's like they don't even come close and i'm talking about this in my book and i'm not gonna get into it because this is the topic for another podcast so i won't go there but yes talk to yourself as you are your best friend and we'll see how will that change your life i hope you liked this podcast i hope it will help you somehow trying to um, change your self-talk and if you have any comments or if you have any questions you can leave it below thank you so much